Section 16 of The Fasti. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Morgan Scorpion. The Fasti by Ovid. Translated by John Benson Rose. Section 16. Book 4. Junius. And various causes likewise are assigned for name of Junius. Satisfy your mind. Take that which pleases most. That's though I sing, tis fiction thought by some, discrediting that mortal men confer with deities. Divinity dwells in us, whence it is inspired. We owe the impetus divine, springing from sacred seed. Such lot is mine preeminently mine a seer am i and all my songs treat of divinity therefore i sought the secret silent grove silent save that the babbling waters rove and there i wandered pondering in my mind and the true cause of the month's name to find and there i met with goddesses not those who to the shepherd seer at Ascra rose nor those who many founted Ida sought, courting Priamides. Except, I ought, one who was there, whose temple stands above the capital, the sister-wife of Jove. Yes, she was there. I, trembling with affright, with pallor on my face, the goddess bright spoke reassurance, saying thus, O seer, toilsome compiler of the Roman year, Treating of matters high, in modest strains, Acquired hast the right that appertains To seers who sing our feasts, To hear and see, and parley with celestials, And with me. Discard now vulgar errors from your mind. Junius derives from me, to me assigned, To me, the sister and the wife of Jove. Nor do I know which term I most approve, sister or wife. I am the eldest born Saturnus of, in whose primeval morn Rome was alike with me, Saturnia hailed, and after heaven Rome o'er the world prevailed. If spousals rank o'er birth, I am the spouse of thundering Jove, and married right allows my fanes on the Tarpeian, joined to his. Maya, his mistress, claims her month. Is this a claim invidious to be made by me? Why am I called Regina? Wherefore the chief of the goddesses? Wherefore hold in my right hand the sceptre staff of gold? Can I from lunar month Lucina be? and be denied the month surnamed from me? Or else, good sooth, I may repent the grace done to Electra and the Darden race for twofold wrongs, abducted Ganymede, and prize denied unto my beauty's mead. I may repent my Carthage I resigned, and arms and chariot that I left behind. I may repent for Sparta, Argus, and my own Mycenae, Samos's ancient land, now subjected to Latium. Furthermore, for my Felisci, worshippers of yore, and good old Tatius, whom I suffered to succumb to Rome, losses I do not rue. I love the Romans well, and naught more dear than with my brother to be worshipped here. And Mars petitioned me, let me commend, he said, these walls to thee. Love and befriend thy grandson's city, and reign potent there. Which came to pass. A hundred altars are erected unto me. Moreover, I claim no trivial honour. This month to my name. Inspect the calendar, and you will find, not Rome alone, but neighbouring towns assigned this month to me. Would it Aricia, Laurentum, and mine own Lanuvia have all their month Junonius? Tiber, too, 
and walls Praeneste's goddess sacred to have their month Junonal, but Romulus did not build them, whilst Rome belongs to us. The goddess seized, I cast my eyes around, where Hebe stood, weeping in grief profound, consort of Hercules. I would not stay in heavenly mansions, if from thence away my mother bade me go, counter to her I do not strive, the suit which I prefer I urge with prayers, she said, I urge my plea, and may my mother, may you favour me, my mother holds the golden capital, conjoint with Jupiter she holds it all this month was mine sole honour that i claimed was that the month was after me surnamed o roman seer dost fear to do me right the wife of hercules in roman sight the roman land owes something to my lord the kine by cacus captured he restored and slew that robber who in fate condign stained with his blood the hill of aventine it was in after days, when youth from age divided was by Romulus, to wage his battles. Whilst age counselled, he decreed the months to bear a record of his deed, age as majores, taking Maius, and juvenes, the month of Junius. So Hebe said. Wrathful her mother grew, and ties of kinship had been rent in two. But concord came goddess of caesar's vows bays apollonian waving on her brows and wreathing tresses o'er her aspect grave she told of tatius and quirinus brave kingdom and subjects juncti when the home common to both established was in rome and junius was surnamed their junction from so the third cause is said now goddesses i yield the chair for this a matter is beyond my arbitrating power with me ye equal are and ye shall equal be a judgment levelled pergamus more harm can two offended do than one can charm calendae junius feast of carna first of these calends is assigned to thee carna and goddess of the hinge with key to open what is closed to close what open be but whence derived that function is obscure. Time, the obscure, shall not hide it more. My song shall say, and fame the tale unfold. By Tiber is thy grove, Helernus old, and pontiffs still do sacrifice to thee. A nymph was born unto thee, Grane she was in that old time named. Oft, but in vain, did suitors woo her. Huntress on the plain, with nets and javelin, she chased the prey. She bore no quivers, yet did people say she sister was to Phoebus. If she were, Phoebus had not offended been by her. And when the youth would woo her, she would say, This place is light, dwells modesty with day. Lead to the secret grot, I follow thee. He enters credulous the cave and she stops when amidst the bushes and there lies inexplicably hidden from all eyes and janus saw and wooed the cruel fair grane repeats to him this open air is all too light and bright seek we the cave and then her usual slip to him she gave ah foolish one janus beholds behind now you are caught he cannot you so blind now you are caught janus beholds the spot the rock your hiding place conceals you not so you became his prize and concubine maiden said happy janus love of thine must have its recompense this hinge shall be the recompense for lost virginity and then he gave a wand of thorn twas white to drive from doors all doers of despite all malice workers greedy birds there are not those of old that wanted were to tear the meats of phineas yet from there and thence do these derive their being heads immense and glaring eyeballs 
vulture beaks and moors and hoary pinions cruel taloned claws they fly by night upon their quest accursed drag infant boys when negligently nursed forth from their cradles and pollute their flesh the milky food within their bowels fresh they suck and gorge commingled with the blood and fill their maws distended with such food striges they are strix is their proper name from screeching in the silent night it came whether they be a race of birds or made by magic charm the marcy so tis said transforming hags to birds uncertain is procus they seek entering his chamber sees procus then five days old their present prey they seize with greedy maws to bear away bellowed the helpless boy it brought him aid for frightened by the cry the nursing maid runs to her infant and beholds his cheeks riled with their cruel claws now aid she seeks for the child's colour all had disappeared like to the leaf autumnal wintry seared she came to granny and she told her tale fear not responded she all strong and hale shall the boy be so to the cradle goes where sat their parents weeping o'er their woes weep not she said i bring you remedy and then with arbued branches thrice smote she the lintels of the window and the door she sprinkled waters on the threshold floor that medicated were and entrails raw of two months porker for the striges more she offered as she said ye birds of night spare entrails of boy babes let these requite for infant child and for a victim small suffice it that a little victim fall here heart for heart entrails for entrails take and life for life these for a better's sake then cut she them to atoms and cast out into the air forbade them round about and witnessing the rites to use their eyes the wand of whitethorn and her maiden prize given by janus placed upon the sill of the small window where the sun rays trill into the chamber after that no more returned the birds of night and hugh he bore returned unto the infant as before now ask you why upon these kalends we eat beans and bacon pristine goddess she loves food of ancient days she loves to dine on simple meats of old nor doth she pine for luxuries imported for in the days of old fish were not purchased oysters were not sold no snipes ionian then were sought as food no cranes delighting in pygmaean blood the peacock in his gaudy plumage fed unfed upon nor bird nor beast was bred fattened in coops it was the fatted sow honoured the festival and paid the vow the land gave gifts spontaneous beans and peas and the sow slain graced our festivities who on these kalends beans and bacon eat need fear no indigestion with their meat temple to juno moneta juno moneta's temple stands on the peak of the capital there decreed to be pursuant to the vow camillus made the home of manlius once where he the raid of gauls withstood and where he victor drove them back from seat of capitoline jove ah then and there he should in patriot palms defender of those fanes have died in arms nor lived to lose his fame in evil hour of stolid age desiring regal power feast of mars and mars again we invocate to-day at the capinan gate and covered way the temple stands temple to tempestus and thee tempestus too for fleet preserved at corsica ensue aquila rises all this on earth we do the while above absorbs with crooked beak the bird of jove four nones juniors hyades arise and hyades and taurine horns are born earth soaked with rain upon the morrow's morn pride nones juniors temple to bellona when phoebus twice more rises o'er the main and cornfields soaked with dews Bellona's fane is visited, built in the Tuscan war, 
she favours Latium I. Appius afar with mental vision, for his eyes were blind, refusing peace to Pyrrhus it designed. A terrace opens to the circus where a column, small but famous, stands. For there the herald priest with javelin in hand, prenunciate of warfare, takes his stand. And hurls it thence, whenever Romans fling defiance against commonwealth or king. Temple to Hercules Custos. The circus else is sacred to the sway of Hercules, a gift the prophecy of the Cumaean verse avouched as his. The light before the nones appointed is, and if you ask on whose authority, Scylla provabit, graven is on high. Nones Junius. Temple to Sancus, Phidias, or Father Simo. I search to learn to whom assigned should be these nones, to Sancus, Phidias, or thee, O Father Simo. Sancus answered me, Assign to either of those titles three, and you assign to me. My names fulfil the will Curitan, and the Sabine will, by temple built on the Quirinal hill. Inauspicious days to marry. My daughter, and I utter now my prayer for happiness for her, and many a year of comfort and of life when mine is sped. Anxious, my child, to strew thy bridal bed when thou wast nubile, then I asked what tides propitious were for bridegrooms and for brides. And June was named, when June hath passed the Ides. T'was the Flaminica, priestess benign, who said, Till Vesta's Iliacan shrine is purged by placid Tiber of its dust, Until that come to pass, refrain you must. It is not lawful unto me to pair with steel my nails, Or comb with box my hair, shorn though it be, Nor consort with my spouse, Though priest of Jove, mine by eternal vows, Wedded by a perpetual decree, Until the Ides be passed. Then patient be, and when relighted Vesta's pure flames blaze, let her espouse in those propitious days. Ides June, Arctophylax sets. Third from the nones, Phoebe, tis said, removes Lycaon from the sphere, and Ursa roves fearless meantime, and I remember too. Games to the river Tiber. The games to yellow Tiber now are due on Campus Martius. Tis a holy day for fishermen, their nets now laid away, nor brass hook baited is for finny prey. Ides Junius, Temple to Mens. Mens too is deified. Carthage perfidious, thou, thou wast the cause of the enshrining vow. Thou hadst again rebelled, and panic dread had fallen upon us, when our consul, dead, we stood astonished by Mauritian arms, and fear had banished hope. These panic qualms the Senate besought men's to soothe and sane, and she besought restored our minds again. On the sixth day before the Ides we paid to her the vow then by the Senate made. End of part sixteen.